All right, what's up guys? Uh, we are starting on the top shelf, like I was talking about before, that we're actually gonna start cleaning off the shelves. We're gonna start working on this. It's a big project, it's not a small thing. It takes a lot to clear these kinds of shelves and to clean them and things like that. Uh, it just is, it is. Anytime you're gonna get into stuff like this, you gotta understand that you're gonna be putting a decent amount of time into this kind of stuff. And as we go through it, uh, there's going to be a lot to talk about. That's that's what I'm trying to say. There's going to be a lot to talk about. A lot of these episodes are going to cover different things like what we find on these shelves and what stays and what goes and why it stays and why it doesn't go and things of that nature. And let's just let's just get into it. All right, so the first thing I want to do, and I know, I know I'm going to come off like a public service announcement or something like that. Be careful, children. But really, um, anything you guys choose to do, anything you choose to do, uh, just look, I especially understand money at this point in time. But when you're like me and you build shelves all the way to the ceiling, Watch how you do this process. Watch how you decide to clean and organize said shelves. I personally trust this. This is a simple little thing. It's a two-step ladder. It's about $15. You can get them anywhere from Walmart, Lowe's, whatever. Just about everybody carries them. They're real simple. They're made of steel. They have about a 250-pound weight limit. And I mean, they are easy. There. That's it. That's all you gotta worry about. It's set, it's a much more sturdy thing than even some of the dumb crap I've done. I've used chairs, folding chairs, that then end up breaking, the bottoms break out or something like that. And I've also used, oh, I've also used chairs like this one that's beside me that's literally on wheels. That is stupid. Get yourself a little platform stool because, uh, you know, a little stepladder thing, a two-step. Uh, this thing is a literal part of your collection. It is a tool that you will use all the time. You'll use it in arranging things. You'll use it in moving, like, like moving material from one end, consolidation. You'll use it for, you'll use it for going up and moving the shelf down a peg or up a peg. You'll use it for whenever you decide to clean or anything like that. You'll get your use out of this. And I actually have a movie rack that's downstairs that also is literally up to the ceiling. So I use this quite a bit, actually, depending on my situation. I decided that it was a good idea to invest in this, and I honestly think that a lot of other people could make that same investment and it would pay off for them in the long run. And you could probably use it for a lot of your housework and stuff like that, too. I have. So, just going to put that out there before we even start. Let's clean the shelf. All right. Here we are at like the highest point that the camera has literally ever been in, I think, the history of this show. I don't think I've ever been all the way up to the ceiling. Like, we are way up here, okay? And, uh, I mean, I guess, to be fair, this isn't like the, I could jump up and touch the wall, don't misunderstand me, but anytime you're elevated, there's a chance you could get hurt. Now, I just use a simple cleaner. I use that La Totally Awesome. I'm not endorsing or anything like that. It's just, it's an all-purpose cleaner. It's simple. I have this cleaner, and then I have some paper towels to dry things off, and then I have, uh, I have a little, actually, I didn't even grab it, so let me grab it. There, Dollar Store Wonder Woman rag for cleaning. I got it. Uh, the top shelf, what's going on up here? What we need to worry about is that we have two plushies and they're coming off the shelf completely. They're not leaving the collection. I like those two pieces. They're gonna go in a different area now, something that I've set up in my bedroom. And then this stuff, this stuff is the problem. This is the problem child of the shelf is these items right here because I like my Gunpla, and I don't want to rebuy Gunpla. We talked about that, and I also would like to keep the box because there's a chance 
that I don't want to rebuy some of this stuff. All of this stuff is coming off the top shelf. I don't know what we're going to end up putting up here. This is a bit of an awkward shelf. It's not an easy area to stock anything because it's not, it's pretty high up here. And from down there, depending on your angle, if we have something that's sitting all the way in the back, you're never going to see it anyway. So the boxes did make sense, but I'd like the space, even if it turns out that figures are moved forward. And I don't, that, that's just the way that I'm looking at things right now. I would like my top shelf back, even if it goes to like books or mangas or something, but something for space in general. And I got to figure out what to do with these. And I may have figured something out. Look at that, this little stool thing, this little two-step ladder even works as a chair if you actually need it. But check this out, this is what I'm thinking. For the top shelf to handle these boxes, they take up a decent amount of space. And truth be told, uh, they're pretty much pointless. Aside from the artwork to guarantee that I, like, know that I've bought these things, this is all that ends up in these things. Sometimes, like, uh, this is a runner with a couple of the extra hands that were not cut out because I wasn't going to use them. That's a runner with a couple of extra pieces. Uh, I could repurpose these to single boxes. Uh, there's an instruction booklet, which I could easily keep that. And probably know exactly which one of these figures that I had in general. Uh, and then there's uh, little things like... There's some extra hands... And there's swords. Extra hands and swords are in that box. That's it. Uh, and there it is. And it takes up a lot of space. And I thought about using these where I lay them down like this and I put them on the shelf and then I can get figures that are lower and figures that are higher. Uh, I can't do that with this. Uh, a lot of these boxes, they're super flimsy. They don't hold up to any kind of weight whatsoever. And even these empty boxes sitting on top of these empty boxes sometimes cause this problem. So that's not necessarily viable. But if I toss this part and I repurpose all these into another thing, like just another little section thing, another box, reconsolidate all my extra hands, all my extra pieces and whatnot into another box, then that would leave me with only two main issues. The books, which don't really take up a lot of space, I could easily just store these literally on this shelf on the bottom and it would be no problem whatsoever. And it would take a very long time for these to accumulate to a point where they meant anything. And even these necessarily, I don't know if I'm even hanging on to these because like... I don't know that they're necessary. They're cool, they're neat, but they've already been used. I've already built the Gunpla. I don't need to build it again. And I've done enough of these things where, like, the extra hands and whatnot on these runners, I know what those are. I know how to build them. I don't even need this. And the artwork isn't exactly anything I'm going to display. The major piece that we don't want to lose, because I think, I think I could toss these, in all honesty. I, I don't think I'd be losing anything in tossing those. Repurpose the runners, repurpose the parts into another solid box, a box that is specifically for all those things. And then take the main artwork, the main thing that I don't want to lose, this. This is solid artwork. Let's turn them, uh, you know, uh, let's do that. That's solid artwork. It is. Every single one of these boxes has very solid artwork. So... In such, what do we do? Because we don't necessarily want to lose this, but even if we threw away the bottom of every box, we'd still have these, and that's about ridiculous, and they still take up the same amount of space. And then I had this idea. I took a book, and I put the book on the inside of this, and I laid the book flat down, and then I took a box cutter and I cut up from the seams of each area here. And once I did all four, I bent them in, creased them, and taped them to one another. My idea I got specifically because I was looking at one of the pictures on my wall, an actual portrait picture. 
And I started realizing the way that the portrait picture is laid out, you don't like hang it up on the wall by hanging it up on like a string or a little metal mount piece or something like that, like you do a picture frame. They're different, they're lightweight. So you basically put one or two nails up on the wall and you balance them and it works. It's not an issue. And then I started thinking, well, some of these things, especially if I'm going to repurpose them for artwork in the garage, because that's what, that was my first indication, was I was going to cut out the fronts and just kind of put them on the wall. And they were going to be cool decorations for the background when we do our shows and when I do my workouts and things like that. And then it hit me. Why not make these things into those kinds of picture frames? And so now they take up a lot less space and it was really simple to do. I just, like I said, put the book inside of there, cut up, took the book out, creased all these, put tape, and there it is. Yeah, that's my Hondo. That's now a cool Hondo portrait. And I think I think I might be on to something. Now I tried to just put this up with tape. Uh, that didn't work. So that part's not going to work. But I'm sure if I get stronger tape or maybe like those little putty tacks or something like that, uh, because of the room I plan to put these things up in, it'll work. Still a little bit to solve on this. But I think this is a way to go. I think this is a way that will allow me to display them and keep them and they'll take up a lot less space and they'll still serve the actual purpose of me being able to literally look right over at the wall and say, I've got that. I've got the HG Hondo build figures and it's, you know, it's, it's the original first run or it's the second run or it's the third run. I'll be able to literally be on Amazon or whatever and when I'm looking for a new model to build and I'm like, I want to build, I want to build like this or that, or I just randomly something comes up and I think, oh, is that a new version? Is that a new build of the Hondo? Well, I don't have to guess. It's right here. And I can look at it and I can say, oh, nope, I've built that one. That's the same, it's the same box. Because we get that a lot in Gunpla where they'll re-release a new wave of Gunpla and there'll be a, there'll be a reprint and there'll be they'll be new. Uh, what I'm trying to say is the HG that I built of my Char back in, uh, of my Zaku 2 Char Custom years ago is not the same one that you build today. It's not. It's not the same one. It's still an HG. Uh, they are very different. They're very different. And so it would be nice, it would be nice to know that if there's a new version of the gym, I kind of want it because I want to see how they've advanced it, how it's better, how the color separation works, how the techniques have gotten so much better, because HG, I'm telling you, it's so crazy. Some of the HG that you build today is literally better than the HG that I built. It's sometimes better than the RGs that I was building. It just is. It, it truly is, because they take a lot of those techniques that they learn in the RG and whatnot, and then slowly after a while, they just kind of become part of HG and then the, the line kind of increases from there. That happens all the time. So I think this is the way to go. Now let's discuss the next part because the other two items that have to come off the shelf but are not coming out of the collection are these two guys. And this part is really simple. It's that simple. It's that simple. Um, I've been buying stuffed animals and things like that for my wife for years now. Uh, there are some things that we like together. There are some things that we don't. Uh, that's my Scotty. He's, I want him from like one of those claw grab things. He's just kind of cool and we don't necessarily have any real reason for him, but we've kept him over the years and he's just there. And then I buy dogs and bunnies and things like that. Whatever I find that I know my wife will be like, oh my God. And there's an entire shelf here, and there's an entire shelf down here, and there's an entire shelf here. We basically repurposed these because they used to hold a lot of Sailor Moon items. And now that I've repurposed them, I can use them for this. And I got a new dresser here, which is a little thinner, but wider. 
and it's all clear across the top. So I have a whole new area of space now to store plushies and things of that nature. And that's what I'm going to do. So some of this stuff is going to leave the shelf. But it ain't going anywhere. I don't plan to get rid of my Mega Man or my Rush. I like these things. I think they're really cool. But since I now have shelving in my bedroom, there's no reason just simply not to use it. So now some of my Pokemon and whatnot are going to come in here, as you see. So little Pokemon like this are probably going to come in here and sit in here. And that's fine. Uh, it's still in my collection. It's just not in my main room, and I don't see any problem with that. So you guys go up there. We'll sort you later, but that's perfect. And that's going to open up a whole new area in the room to store new stuff, because now I can store some a couple things like a couple of the Pokemon that can come off the shelf and come into here, and a couple of the bigger, more impressive Pokemon items can stay in there. That's cool. I actually really like that idea. It's just spacing the collection out, but it's still a matter of figuring out what stays and what goes. And though we're not going to get into it, this room is going to go through the same kind of treatment because we are going to go through a lot of these things and say what stays and what goes. Some of this stuff is not meant to stay here. But that's the idea so far. So that's it. You now know the process. You know exactly what I'm going to be doing. Uh, there's nothing more to say for this video in terms of breaking down the shelves. Uh, I'm going to clean that. I'm going to pull those off. I'm going to do this to every single one of the boxes. And uh, I mean, here's the worst case scenario. This doesn't work. I lose the boxes. Um, inevitably, in order to get that top shelf, space is a real thing. And um, one thing I'm not, and you do have to be careful about this because collecting can become this mentality before you realize it. One thing I'm not is a hoarder. Now, I'm not saying anything bad about those people. Those people Many of them don't choose to live that way. It is a literal disorder that they have. They're, they didn't choose to do that. It happened to them. And it happened to them by not being able to let go. And I'm serious about that. A lot of these people that get stuck in that mentality, they get into, sometimes they start exactly where we are right here. We're interested in collecting. And then we collect, and then after a while we're buying things because we just want to like buy them, because it like makes us happy to buy it. And then later on, we're in a we can out we can also hit a bad state of mind where like, oh, I don't want to lose the boxes. Well, okay. Slightly in a state like that, I don't want to lose the boxes. But I also have to keep the mind frame that I either try something or they take up my space and I can't get anything else because that's the way it is. Space is the number one combatant of collecting. And if you ignore that principle, you may accidentally find yourself, find yourself stepping into a department where you're like keeping everything. And if you start keeping everything, you could accidentally step even further into that department where you don't want to get rid of anything. Like I mentioned, uh, the instruction booklet. Uh, I threw it over there. But what's that instruction booklet do for me now? Is it actually part of the collection? Do I take it out? Do I ever look at it? Does it serve any purpose to me or anybody else that has ever walked in this room? No. They were instructions, and I used them, and they're done now. They're done now. It's not the same thing as a Lego set. Chances are, if the Gunpla gets damaged, I already know how to fix it. I've done enough of them. They come fairly standard in some of their operations where I just know what I'm doing. I don't need the instructions. And even if I sold it, I don't need the instructions. Because at that point, I'm basically selling it as a model. There's little things that you have to you have to talk with yourself. Yes, there's artwork. Yes, it was part of the experience. Yes, it's cool. But it is packaging. 
it is instructions. You've built the unit. It is no longer in a state where you couldn't do it without the instructions. Uh, they serve no purpose, personally, for me. You, maybe you have a really cool way to keep all this stuff. And maybe you only collect gunpla. But see, that's another thing, too. I have to consider all the time that the collection is expanding. And rather than move into that state of mind that I don't want to get rid of anything, I pick and choose what I feel is legit, cool, and important enough to keep, such as when I describe to you what I do with all of the Masters stuff. With the Masters of the Universe stuff, when I buy one of these origin figures, I cut the top piece of that artwork off that I really like, and I toss away the packaging. The packaging is really cool on every angle, but the main part I want, I want the fantasy art. And I will make, I will make a purpose of that fantasy art. I won't make a purpose of just the packaging. I'm not the kind of person that hangs the He-Man in the packaging on the wall. I don't do that. This, I would do. This is a really cool idea, personally, for me. I think that if I pull this off right and I get these up, I can get them up in here and I can get them up down in the new makeshift studio workout area. And this is a good idea. I. I legit think this is a good idea. I think these are going to make fantastic little Gundam arts. And so that's the end of the episode because now I got to clean that shelf, pull all the boxes down, repurpose all their material into a new single master box and go from there uh, and start making these, to be fair. I'll be back to talk about the next shelf later on, unless some kind of news or something interrupts me. You know how I am. But either way, that is the next major series of videos is going to be talking about the collection and talking about what stays and what goes and things like that. That's where we are right now in terms of the big thing. I've got to break the shelves down again all the time. you got to do that. But hey, I guess that keeps the show going. It always gives us something to talk about. But I'm now rambling. I'm dragging on. It's become pointless. I'm getting out of here. I have work to do. I have to do all this and make these. I make them. And if you want to make them, uh, if you honestly want to know how I do it, if you want to see how I do it, I feel like it's fairly self-explanatory, but if you need to see it, uh, I guess say something in the section below or whatever, and I will purposely hold one of the boxes back and do it on camera just to kind of showcase how it's done. But I, I mean, to some people, even the simplest of arts and crafts is like a science. Uh, I'm kind of that way. I'm surprised that I figured this out on my own because I'm not an arts and crafts guy. I don't, I don't do well with stuff like this. Half the time I know things that I want to do and I can't do it. And I ask other people how they do it or how to do it. And sometimes I just have them do it. I'm not, I'm not that person. So, uh, I guess I'm, I guess I'm kind of proud of myself with this one. I don't know. Later on. I have spoken. Take what you will from it.